everyone, Steel Horse here. We're back on Adolfshoven in September. I'm just getting a little bit of field work done. We've just had some premium potatoes produced. And the only place we can sell those is our little farm store here. So I'm just loading that up. I'm also putting our uh, sunflower oil on the back of the ute because uh, it's the best time we'll get for a few months. I'll show you in a minute uh, to sell sunflower oil. And you'll remember that last time we finished off that uh, large contract and so I'm hoping I can, I don't think I can pick all four up but I reckon I can get two uh, we finished that large contract which took us up to uh, 40 odd thousand and then this morning I've done a couple of uh, trips across to the animal dealer over the road to sell the last of the silage that was in our fermenting silo so we're up to 53 what I'm keen to be able to do uh, is finally buy that field we've been talking about and where are you there so we go just out a little bit and down push him over there pull you out of there tilt forward there we go uh, yeah so if we sell up all our produce we've got enough money to buy a field the question then becomes which one so we'll also look at that in just a minute but all in all we're in uh, a pretty good space I did learn something uh, just a minute ago selling the silage so it turns out uh, I run with um, trailer capacity weight capacity turned on uh, and so normally I would sell the silage out of the trailer that has the barley in it uh, this time I used the forage wagon just because it's the only uh, trailer we've got with any capacity in it and uh, it was interesting whoops why do you do that? You will push in, but you won't retract. There we go. Much better. Yeah, so it turns out that that uh, when you uh, silage is much heavier than grass or hay. So whilst I can get with the compaction feature on 50 or 60,000 litres of hay or uh, grass in that uh, forage wagon when it comes to silage it will only take about 12,000 so I guess it makes sense there's a lot more moisture uh, in silage uh, but it was a lot less than I expected so that just meant it was uh, five trips over the road to be able to sell off the silage so that's over there we'll leave wool for now because i suspect that's a pretty terrible price but that's all loaded on let's have a look at our prices so oops let's click on the right 
button prices for sunflower oil two thousand and forty seven nineteen eighty seven so two thousand and forty seven is up near the high, but as you can see after September it sort of drops off a cliff for a few months so I think we want to sell. Uh, so we might run up there. We've also got some tomatoes on. They're a terrible price, but they're, uh, in fact, they're right at the bottom of the market. Um, but they are perishable, so we will sell those anyway. And that's all we've got on there, I think. Yes. So the main thing is sunflower oil. So we make, it's falling up at the farmer's wholesale market. Uh, the regular farmer's market is $60 cheaper, but for 7,000 litres that we've got there, that's another $400. So that's probably worth driving up to take advantage of. So I think we'll do that. So we'll duck up and get that job done. Before we go, whoops. It, okay, so learning for next time, the our cell point is a bit too close to the road uh, off that roadside market and consequently when we drove through, it took a few products off us, which is mildly annoying, um, given that they were strapped down. But the other thing we'll do just before we... Now, let's have a look at the field situation. So the first question is, we want a field that we can put grass in ultimately because the fermenter is our primary way of making money at this point. We don't have the other equip equipment to be able to plant it out of field and it'll be a while since we can get, until uh, we can get potatoes. Now, fields that are empty at the moment 7 14 15 and 16 although 22 is ready to harvest so what can we afford 23 is just a bit out of our price range 15 we can afford Seven is out of our price range, 164 and 14's way out, of course. So 15's a possibility, and that's a twice the size, more than twice the size of field 30 that we had before. It's also moderately conveniently located. 22, which it said was ready to harvest, is also affordable. Um, wonder what it's got in 22. Not that that really matters. What contracts are available? Uh, bailing, bailing, cultivating, fertilizing. We don't want to do that fertilizing contract on field 12. It'd be pretty good, but we're not got the time for that at the minute. Oh, field 22 is a harvesting contract that we can take. So that might, if we borrow this equipment, yeah, that'll work because it's only 366, far cheaper than if we would try to lease it ourselves. So if we borrowed this equipment, we're going to get paid to take the crop off which works, and then once the crop's off, if we buy the field, it's empty and we can put our grass in. So I think that's going to work out nicely. So what we need to do is go up and sell this produce as we planned at the wholesale market, and uh, then... I'll see you over at the dealership to 
uh, bring the equipment across to the farm. So that only took a minute or two to drive across here to the wholesale market. And we'll relieve ourselves of this produce. Let's drive up here. Like we're in the, the cell point. It's working down through those tomatoes. Very slow to sell tomatoes. Or to unload. So there we go, 13,000. So that's really handy. We're up to 68,000. So that's all actually quite exciting. So I'll uh, see you across at the dealership where we can pick up that uh, harvester and, uh, and get on with working that field. So there's the equipment. We'll just park here out of the way and uh, ferry the equipment round through the field that we have to work. 22 is only just down the road there. So if we hook everything up, we can get uh, a helper from the store here to help us bring it around. This shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be an overly onerous job. It wasn't uh, a particularly difficult field or particularly large field and um, this equipment should knock it over pretty quickly just squeeze out of there not try not to scratch that uh, guy's red van the shop likes to put things in real tight here Uh, but this Nova 330 Rustle Mash should be pretty easy to work that field. I reckon we'll go close to getting the crop in the trailer. If I recall correctly, we, um, we might have even fertilised that field under a contract a couple of months back. So that will no doubt help with the yield. So if we just turn on, follow me here, right control and F, hold it down and until we have a worker in the cab. And then we can, not too quickly, because the roster mash is not the fastest vehicle in the world, just trundle around. The road here should bring us up to the back of the back of the field that we need to work. There's actually a farm track from memory that goes fairly close by the side of that field. Yep, here it comes along. We just don't want to outdistance it too far that's the only challenge the convoys you only have a, a single vehicle you can tend to leave the leave the harvester behind if you're not familiar with us on this map i have turned uh traffic off uh, I, I like the uh, the immersion that traffic adds but unfortunately there's a crossroads in the middle of the little town here that traffic doesn't handle particularly well and uh, it just creates a massive traffic jam which is really annoying and it's right by our yard so we go with traffic off we can see on the mini map that our harvester is still coming along this is where we need to turn in and uh, that orange 
crop right there is what we need to harvest. So I'll just duck around the corner here and pop on the side. And then our cluster can just duck over there and begin. Here he comes. So what have we got here? Yeah, yield bonus 98%, 100% fertilised this sorghum. So that's good. We'll jump in there. Thank the worker for their help. And we'll just, just squeak across the top of the field here. Put the header on. And away we go. So this shouldn't take us too long. I'm quite excited about the prospect of getting our own arable field. I mean, I know the potatoes were an arable field, but really our long-term plan there was more about having a yard location in town. So this kind of feels like we're about to make the step to out of startup mode and into really having something established and you know, these fields either side or in fact all around us um, look like they're a good size and potentially with only a little bit of growth we could uh, expand into them moderately quickly. I mean when you think about it we've only this is only the, the first month in our second year so we're not doing too badly. percent gets us halfway around so we should be able to get a, a lap in stay out of that farmer's crop would be nice at the top of the screen we can see we're coming up to 18 19 percent so 20 percent represents a quarter of the crop off the field so because the last 20 percent relates to the work uh, doing the delivery part of the job but at 80% complete, we'll have all the crop off the field near enough. And so we've just gone 21% and we're 93% in the harvester. So my simple maths suggests we'll get four tanks out of the harvester. Just put the pipe out here. Put you on a worker going down there just for a sec while we go get the trailer. Feeling like we've got enough 
cash. It's filled up, not surprisingly. Only moved a couple more feet. in the harvester I think because we'll know we'll get a f another full lap in before we need to empty again always a good sight like me you like using the uh, like driving the, the harvester uh, but you want to use something to help speed up the, the overall process then if you're not familiar with it you can use follow me in this situation and I'll show you how so we've got to sort of take a guess at the minute it'll take just a second to set up but if we say well out we want to follow the harvester with this device so control right control f will set up the follow and then right control uh, a will put us out to the left and i'm guessing about six meters is the length of that pipe but instead of being 25 meters behind we need right control and w to probably be about 10 meters ahead so that's the position he's going to drive to we're going to drive forward and see what sort of a guess what's happening here oh, we're in the so we've Set it to follow, but it's at, we've actually given it a follow point that's in front. And so now, if we go ahead and harvest, he's going to try and maintain that follow point. And six metres looks like it was a pretty good guess to the left. That's pretty close to the centre of the trailer. And ten metres ahead is probably just a fraction. It feels... Well, it may feel when you set it up like it's too far ahead but because there's a little bit of delay between you starting driving and the position that the tractor can maintain uh, it works quite well now at the corner here as long as we don't back up we might lose the trailer for a second but here we can just keep going just keep it in a forward direction that's one part of the reason why i did the headlands here so we can turn and that tractor is going to attempt to recover the unload position and in the meantime we've got a little bit more crop in the hopper now if we don't want to have the worker following all the time like this we could very easily jump across Stay back at the end of the row there and then just pick it up on the next way round again because it will remember 
the settings we made. So for instance, I could just pause here for a second. He's going to stop at 10 meters. I'll jump in here, turn H to turn the worker off. And next time we come past, I'll do the same again and turn it on. I'll show you on the last lap because we know we've probably only got one more load to put in that trailer, but that means, as you can see, that I can maximise my time driving the harvester, which I find more enjoyable, and then just use the worker in short doses to bring the, the cart alongside. So just another use of the tool. As I said, there's lots of ways to play the game and it depends on what you like to do. But that use there that works for me. So we're coming along quite nicely now. Almost finished harvesting this field. The advantage of turning it off like that also is if you've got a, a corner that you need to tidy up or a, an area where you will need to reverse, then it, it doesn't mess up or confuse follow me. So I can now get, you know, almost another full grain tank before I in effect pull for unloading. So it's a kind of a slightly manual version of what horseplay does when it pulls for a, uh, a worker to unload. Which is a bit similar I guess to how it might work in real life where harvester driver will radio the field we'll just get that little one which will annoy people yeah the harvester driver will radio for his pickup driver it'd be really neat if there was a a way to actually activate follow me as i drove past without having to go into the the cab whilst I can change follow me's directions if it's activated I can't I'm not aware of a way to turn it on from another vehicle so that just takes a second as you'll see in a moment as long as I'm in front of him sort of in a forward phone put my pipe out so I'm ready pause here this is close enough right control F yes it will you can see it's maintained that spacing that we set last time there you go he pulls up alongside really nicely So now we'll just finish our row here. We've just got a bit of a tight turn, which might prove a little tricky. If I can, unless I can avoid it by getting all the crop, which I might be able to. The wheel whiz round like so. And the tractor will probably catch us back up and get the rest of our unload just as we're finishing the field. So fairly well. I think it looks like the trailer is actually full. So we didn't quite get all the crop in. Turn that off. 
Yeah. Pay the worker an extra couple of dollars. can't remember what location we have to take the take the sorghum too so we'll turn that off let's have a look here so we've finished the harvest it's got to go to our potato production Okay. That's convenient, albeit mildly uh, annoying, only because I wasn't planning on keeping this, the sorghum. I don't think we'll have very much left over. And uh, by delivering it to our production means that we miss out on the opportunity to turn it into a immediately into a few dollars in fact i'm surprised our potato production takes it i don't i can't think off the top of my head what potato production um, would use it for but uh, we can have a look at that while it's unloading we might as well sip all of it in there we can't uh, as I said, I don't think there'll be very much left over. Let's, let's navigate this corner. There we go. And there's a box right in the way. Which is a good thing because that's more... That's more premium potatoes to sell. Can we squeeze just between there and the chair without breaking anything? possibly and this trailer has a tip side which I'm hoping with a U there we go that's going to unload out of there let's go over here and have a look uh, at the production so What's our potato production makes French fries, which obviously don't need sorghum. Premium potatoes don't need sorghum. It must be the pig food. Sugar beet sugar makes sugar. And it looks like sorghum wheat. Oh, sorghum bar. So we could put the barley in here if we got some soybeans from somewhere to make some more pig food. Um... Hmm, well that's something to to think about. Uh, we'll deal with that down the the track. Okay. That's empty there and that was ninety nine ninety nine percent complete on the contract. So just a whisker of what we've got left in the combine we'll finish that contract off so we need to get that out and emptied uh, and then we can go ahead and complete the contract and uh, purchase this field and we'll be proper farming landowners so that's quite exciting and then we need to set about it's only just coming up to lunchtime so uh, we need to set about getting some grass in the field, which is the plan to get a, a grass crop off it before the end of the year. Let's just pull in there like so. Two and a half thousand. We may end up with a slightly more uh, crop here than I expected. Uh, 
Oh, I'll just see. Get you off the field. I'm back to drop this off. Yeah, 2,400 litres there. But we, we could potentially end up with 2,000 litres of sorghum here, which is a, a nice little bonus over the top. So we might have to do the maths on uh, potentially putting some a small set of pigs on that uh, field next to our yard. It doesn't have to be big. We'll do some calculations to figure out what a realistic production of pig food is and uh, maybe sort of treat it as a, a surplus from our production and uh, just use it to generate a supply of pigs that we sell every few months and let's do it the same way we did before See if we can thread the needle That in there. So there's the field done, and that gave us sixteen hundred liters of sorghum. So potentially, if we can get the same amount of barley and half as much soy, that'll give us um, you know six eight thousand liters of pig food, which seems to be plenty. So let's um, let's go and finish our contract. We don't need that equipment anymore. We can now then head up to our field map here and purchase ourselves for forty nine thousand six hundred and eighty dollars a field. So we have twenty thousand left over. Let's go to the map. And the map overview. We're just going to put grass in it. So I'm thinking that all we need to do under it. So we've got our little grass cedar just around here that we bought some time ago. I wonder if that's a direct drill. Let's have a look. So our grass cedar is... Maybe we didn't buy it. Maybe we leased it. We did lease it. So we've been hanging on to it for a while. So it will do grass for us. And it doesn't look like it's a direct drill. So in order to be able to plant grass seed in there, we're going to need another device to prepare the soil I suspect let's fill it up with some seed and get it over there anyway because that's going to be required so refill you only holds 200 litres of seed so From memory this is not costing us very much and the idea was we would be regularly seeding so as much as anything it was an experiment set for grass 
and I'm pretty confident this is not going to work. So turn you on, put you down. So it's interesting. Yeah, so it doesn't work. It mulches grass, but it doesn't mulch stubble. But that's okay. So what we need is to drop you off the side there and duck up to the shop, which luckily is just over here, and pick ourselves up. Uh, I'm thinking really just the cultivator will do fine. So what can we find in the shop? Nothing suitable. Gee. I'm glad I looked there. I woo. So they're both useful. Uh, so that's a self-propelled mower, which is quite attractive. But these butterfly rear mowers are even more attractive. I think eight point three meters. I don't think we can let that go. So. That's right up our alley for our grass business. So we'll buy that while we see it. However, that brings us down to 10,000. So what can we do with cultivators? We certainly can't buy one from the selection we've got. These are all a bit expensive. What's the... It looks like these three, that is three metres, four metres and five metres. I'm thinking, what's the lease price on the five metre? Lease price on the five metre is $1,200. Let's just be done with that. It'll be faster. And that'll get us on the way okay so down with our cultivator and off we go we're probably right on the horsepower limit for this tractor pretty close to i should have checked that but we're yeah i think we're i think it would normally be 15 kilometers an hour but the field's dead flat so, and we're managing 14, so that will do just fine. The extra width will save us a couple of trips up and down the field, so I think that's a good thing. So, sit back and enjoy what you're doing. We certainly are. Oops, missed that bit on the edge. Concentrate, that'd be a good idea, Steel. While I've been sitting here cultivating, I've uh, been pondering our financial situation. And uh, whilst it looks still um, hard, I guess, a bit grindy, given that you know, we've only got five, uh, 9,000 in the bank again, uh, I actually think we might be in a slightly better position than I initially thought. Um, we're not completely out of the woods by any stretch, but we're, we're coming along because if I think about our production, so our garden, greenhouse, 
uh, and the potatoes. I haven't done the exact calculation, but we look like we're producing around about enough produce to cover our monthly costs um, for leasing with probably just a little bit left over. Um, so that's great. So that means then if we can get uh, the fermenting silo stocked and cooking, then the money out of there can be converted straight into new fields, which should mean uh, looking at the sort of general prices for the smaller fields on this map. Every uh, three or four months, we should now be able to afford uh, another field, which would be terrific. Um, so that's one thing, and that's in that calculation, keep in mind, I haven't, um, I'm not suggesting, well, I haven't taken account of what might happen if we do, um, that's a silly place to leave it, uh, if we were to do some contracts. So kind of in that mode, then contracts become almost a bonus or a chance to um, invest in equipment. And uh, the trigger for that was to say, well, okay, so let's, um, if we take these, this cultivator for it, my ori original thought was, oh, well, we'll just lease it for the month to get this field done uh, and that will be that. But now I'm thinking, well, actually, maybe what we should do uh, is hang on to it, have a quick look in the shop. I noticed there was some, uh, some contracting opportunities for cultivation so rather than borrowing the equipment let's um there we go we are now planting grass let's use this cultivator that we've got and do a couple of those contracts at a minimum that should pay for what it costs us to take the cultivator uh, so that might be a good activity for next time uh, and then really what cult, uh, what cultivated, what contracting becomes uh, is an opportunity to get us ahead on the equipment front. So, you know, the fermenting silo is sort of the machine, the engine room of getting hold of some land and the contracting opportunities are the chances to get into our own equipment, even if it's only taking advantage of the the second hand opportunities so in broad terms that's feeling to me like we're within a whisker of being you know quite well established and really able to start to generate some growth in our activities on the the map uh, so i'm pretty excited about what that represents so now if we look at where we are here this is only a little narrow device and it seeds at a pretty normal speed, 12 kilometers an hour. So it's going to take a little while. Um, we are also, though so one end and one strip looks like it's used about 12%. So we're going to need probably two refills which means we require a bag of seed over here. What I'm thinking we'll do here is, now that we've done a, a headland, that should be enough to keep an AI out of trouble. We'll put a regular worker on for a minute. And that way we can run over to the store, pick up our ute, go back and get some seed. Uh, we'll also grab the schnuffel stook because then we can take the, the cultivator back.
Let's pick up this Nuffel Stuck. We will need to drive up here where we'll be able to put a bag of seed on. We can also move those potatoes round to the oh and some sunflower seeds. So we'll just move a couple of pallets while we're here. I think we'll only need one bag of feed. Can't see that field requiring more than one. shifted generates about six no three hundred and seventy three dollars there you go so they're only little bits of produce we'll leave the sunflower oil there but we will take these seeds and put them in the production said today how effective this little JCB is for this cramped little yard. Very useful. Okay, I think that's those chores. We'll keep storing the wool up. We'll sell that at the top of the wool market. That's not going to be perishable. Turn it off, would be good. And the other thing we were going to look at was just whether there are more cultivating contracts. Bailing, bailing, cultivating. 15 will accept you. 16 will accept you. That big fertilizing contract is there. Maybe we should accept that so that we can do that next time. I think we will. I think we'll accept that. That'll be a big payday for us. So that'll do for now. Sowing and plowing will leave. So there's three contracts that we know we'll be able to to do next time. Oops. We'll just finish off this grass and that will be a great day it's work. We're we're up and going. Whilst it won't be a full cut, we will, or we should be able to get a cut of grass off here uh, in November, which will get our 
fermenting silo back and running and then we'll get a full cut and when it's ready in the new year so let's put which way around is that that's the back let's not we'll have to go and fill that up in a second So it's looking like one more load of seed would, if it was empty, would just about fill this, but we won't get down and back without uh, a refill. So we will fill up while we're here. Drive over to the ute and shovel a couple of scoops. I hope. Yes, there we go. Not on again. So with that underway, and uh, really half or less of the field to go, I think we're in uh, great shape. It's been a terrific day. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. We're really on our way. Well, we're at the launching pad, I think. And so hopefully we'll be able to uh, start to explore some different directions in the next few episodes now that we've got the, the basics under control to an extent. So there's always the chance that something won't quite go right, but I think we've, uh, we've got our foundation established. So you can see the opportunities starting to present. So we're just going to finish this off and uh, I very appreciative of you taking the time to watch thank you for uh, your support and we will see you next time thanks for watching see ya